Welcome to another episode of the Learner's Mindset Discussion. I'm Dr. Dwayne Harapnik, and my colleague is... Dr. Talisa Thibodeau. Today, we're going to be exploring e-portfolios. What are they? What are they used for? No, no. What I mean is, what are they really used for? You know, um, they're often used for one thing, but we often don't really take advantage of what they could potentially do. We often use them as a container that we dump digital resources into, but what can we use them for that goes well beyond a digital container? Um, what does a good e-portfolio look like? I, I don't know if we'll be able to get to that one today because I think we've got a lot to talk about. But So this is a starting point. E-portfolios can be an amazing tool. They have become identified as what the 11th um, high impact practice by a, uh, a, a learning consortium. Um, and if used well, they can make a wonderful difference in people's lives. The challenge is what we've seen in the research, and we've seen this with the uh, ABLE Association. Um, this is sort of the you know uh, world's foremost group on e-portfolios. Is that we're really not using e-portfolios very well. So how do we fix that? How do we use e-portfolios well? What are your thoughts, Dr. Thibodeau? I was thinking about the former president of ABLE Association, um, Trent Batson, when he said, if you portfolios are so great, why aren't more people using them? He refers to that as the Edinburgh Challenge, or Edinburgh Challenge, however you say it. Um, but I think that e-portfolios are sometimes compartmentalized. You know, it's, it's an assessment e-portfolio, or, or I use it as an online resume, or, you know, and, 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 or I use it just to reflect. But what about you know, pulling all of those pieces together? You know, in terms of um, sharing your disposition and, and watching, you know, and sharing your digital presence, who you are, and, and letting the world have access to you, and um, sharing your ideas and connecting and collaborating. So I think if we move away from this, you know, e-portfolios are a certain thing and they can only be that way, or folio thinking, where it's just about writing and, and that's all. But if we pull all of that together, it becomes an experience. And, and that's what is truly, I think, can be truly transformative for people is pulling all of the pieces together on an EP and, and sharing that out and then collaborating with peers. What do you think? What do you think on that? Yeah, I, I think it really can be a powerful transformative experience um, along the lines of what Misero or Mesero uh, talks about in terms of you know people finding their voice and being able to use that metacognitive reflective experience to be able to go into deeper understanding and learning, you know, transformational learning. Yes, they can be there, or the e-portfolios can be used for that. Um, but I, I think a, a challenge that we're facing is uh, was highlighted this past summer when I was attending the ABLE conference um, uh, in, uh, in North Vancouver at Capilano University. And um, in, in one of the major breakout, not the breakout sessions, but one of the plenary sessions, um, a group of researchers were taking a look at one of the biggest challenges that they were facing. And that is getting learners to really engage in taking that ownership and you know doing something that was meaningful, using the e-portfolio for more than um, just a container. And, and through that whole process, and, and I've been going to these conferences for years, and I've been looking at the research for years, um, a few of the people were starting to realize that one of the big challenges that they were facing as instructors is that students are only going to put into the e-portfolio stuff that they are required to put in. And if they aren't doing things that are meaningful, significant in the courses that they're taking, well, then all you're going to get is a repository for a digital assignment, for an essay, for yeah presentation they've created. So one, one of the presenters was lamenting the fact that, you know, the in, in the capstone session, um, they weren't getting the type of use that uh, they could potentially get. And all the way along in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, the, the challenge is that the e-portfolio isn't the problem. The problem is, is that we often aren't asking our students to do anything that is meaningful and significant. And so when we ask them to reflect on something that really has no meaning in their lives other than the assignment, all we're going to get is this cursorial you know, superficial level of uh, reflection on something because it isn't meaningful. But if we switch what we do, if we create those significant learning environments where we do give our learners choice, ownership, and voice through that authentic learning opportunity, if it's real, 
if the student owns the experience, if they're working on a real project, a real service learning project, if they're making a difference in their community, in, in, uh, in the world around them, in their classroom, in their school, in their place of business, if they're actually doing something that has meaning, well, guess what? The e-portfolio reflection that we all want and that we all identify as a gold standard then becomes attainable. So it, it's, it's once again an example of we've got the technology, we've got the tools, we've got the ability, but it comes back to setting up the learning. If we don't set up the learning right, the best tools are actually useless because it, it goes back to that, that meaningful learning experience that the student owns. So that, that's the challenge. E-portfolios can mean something very significant if the learning is significant. What do, what do you think? Am I, am I being too idealistic here? <laughs> I don't think so, because what you describe reminds me of a former student in our master's in digital learning and leading who said, you know, I don't want the ePortfolio to become a repository that collects e-dust. Instead, this same student turned around and connected his passion to his purpose in his e-portfolio. And instead of just using the e-portfolio as somewhere to just showcase as a repository, he actually wrote his own job description instead of just using it as an online resume. I see folks compartmentalize their e-portfolios as an online resume, but it can be so much more than that. So when I think about you know, working with some of the other students that I work with on campus, connecting their passion and what they are to their purpose. So the work that they're doing, the authentic work that they're doing and learning in their programs and it being able to put that on their e-portfolio, share their ideas with each other, collaborate and connect with people in a way they would not have otherwise been able to connect. E-portfolio allows that. But my question is, why don't folks always take the opportunity to do that? You know, why, why, why do we sometimes get caught up in, okay, let me just, um, you know, post this here. And I think it kind of goes back to what you mentioned before. If we're not setting up a learning environment that our learners have choice, ownership, and voice, and they're not working on something authentic, it is very easy for them to just see it as a container. So to get them to shift, we have to focus on those opportunities that they can reflect, expand, and use what they're learning and, and um, share that out in a meaningful way. It goes back to that meaningful way that you, dis that you discussed, and, and it goes back to the learning as well. How are we setting up those significant learning environments? That might be a really good topic for our next LMD um, going down that path. Yeah, I think we do need to go down that path, but I, I want to... I want to address what you talked about, um, the, or the question: Why, why, why is there that tendency to sort of fall back into using it as a container? I'm going to go back to um, the the instructional design, and I I, uh, I have the privilege right now of working with a capstone class of, of students in the DLL program. So these are the students who are working on their, 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 final, their final course. And in that final course, you know, they are pulling together their e-portfolio, they're, they're presenting their cohort reflection, they're looking at their uh, presentation of their innov innovation uh, project, where are they so far, and, and pulling the pieces together. And then that whole final synthesis piece. And so they're, they're really working on their e-portfolio. Some of the students have spent a lot of time building and working and so at the end it's just a matter of tweaking things that will be important to them and so uh, it's quite easy others haven't but something came up under this discussion on on monday or actually yesterday that that i think is very significant and and even in the dll program you know we we have built the environment the significant learning environment where, where we give students choice ownership and voice through authentic learning opportunities and through all of our courses students for the most part do focus on connecting what it is that they're doing in that course to the major project but in in uh, these students have to go through one of our courses as that is a little bit more content focused is it it follows some of the foundational ideas and and it has a project component to it but it is a little bit more content heavy and you when you are simply asking students to give you content back 
it's not meaningful. And so in that particular course, they, they didn't do anything other than sort of the final week compilation. But even then, it was just sort of, uh, it's a container where we put stuff. So it goes back to the, the instructional design. It goes back to that course design or that learning design. If we're asking our students to just give us content back, well then, guess what? The ePortfolio simply becomes a container if the yeah. students even bother to use it as a container. It doesn't become meaningful. One, one of the students said, yeah, it's really too bad. You know, I, I seem to have fallen out of practice over the last five, six weeks because I haven't really been posting and now that I haven't posted, you know, it, it, see, see, I'm out of rhythm. I'm out of rhythm. So, you know, we spend all that time getting, getting students into the rhythm of posting on a weekly basis. And all it takes is sort of one circumstance where they fall out of that rhythm. And then it's like any habit. You, you, you stop going to the gym for a few days or a week. And then one week leads to two and two leads to a month. And, and then, you know, before you know it, you're on the couch eating potato chips and drinking Coca-Cola. Well, I don't know if it's that bad, but. Wow. <laughs> just made me think of a couple of things so oh, great example and the example I started thinking of when you started talking about rhythm I started thinking of collecting the dots versus connecting the dots so if we're just collecting the dots it's easy to, to collect that content and put it onto the ePortfolio but when we're connecting the dots this is where the ePortfolio really really makes it a viable option to have a transformative experience because you are reflecting, sharing, collaborating, producing, and as you're writing and, and revising and, and restructuring and working through your voice and, and learning you know, where you are with your innovation plan and how you're going to influence other people and how you're going to set up your significant learning environment if that is what you're doing. Um, you're thinking and, and reflecting and posting. So I think ePortfolio, if, if we engage it that way, and, and we actually do in our program, um, folks get into the rhythm. It's kind of like playing the piano. You know, a single isolated note is all on its own. Boom, <laughs> boom, boom. You can actually push any note anywhere, sharp, uh, you know, a flat, but you can get into the rhythm by playing a song, right? And so that's where the, the, the dots come together when we say collect the dots versus connect the dots. And so... I, I was thinking about that as you were talking. I was thinking about my former experience as a piano player. I played piano for five years and nothing really sounded good when it was just bing, 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 bing. But when I pulled it all together, then I was able to, you know, and, and it takes time. It takes a little time to get used to that. Yeah. And, you know, I get that because our, our folks in ePortfolio, they need a little time to get adjusted to that. And, and as they start doing it more and more and more, the rhythm starts picking up. So thank you for helping me think of that um, in my head. <laughs> you made well, that very good. Actually, it was one of our, one of our students. I, I can't remember who it was. I'll have to go back to the recording of the session and see who mentioned that. But they, they, did, they did talk about that rhythm in, in, in the same way that you have. And that okay. it's so easy, so easy to fall out of the rhythm. And, and this sort of reminds me of a conversation we had with another one of our students who is an IT director um, in his school, and, and he's in, in our program, and he's recognizing that, you know, just getting the technology in the teacher's hands is, is only part of the puzzle. Um, recognizing that if you don't create a significant learning environment where that technology is used to enhance learning, well, then quite often all you're going to use that technology for is a digital worksheet or the digital container if we talk about the ePortfolio context we have. And so it's so easy to fall back into that standardized way of giving the information back, right? Delivering the content back or, or showing, yes, I've got the content, you gave it to me, here, I massaged my version of the content and I put it in this container and so there, I've got the content, I show you I have the content, oh, good, I get my mark. Well, you're right. That's just an example of collecting the dots. Mm -hmm. But the rhythm of connecting the dots is where we get that deeper learning. And that's, uh, boy, you know, we've, we've got an idea for <laughs> another article or a book here. You know, the rhythm of learning. Wow. Hmm, interesting. Or that might be a chapter in one of our other books coming up. So um, it, it is it is interesting. It, it Once again, think about it. We're, we're talking about technology and ePortfolio. It's a digital container. If you use it as a digital container, but if you go beyond just that digital container ness and you recognize, no, no, it's a tool that we can use that can help a learner to f not only find their voice, but to establish that voice and develop it and build it to the point that it really helps them to transform 
their own understanding and their own learning. So again, it's a tool and if used properly, it can do some amazing things. So we've, we've got the potential, got the potential. That in, when I've taught the capstone in previous sections, I, I've noticed that sometimes folks are uncomfortable in the beginning sharing their voice or they didn't even know they had a voice, but through yeah. sharing, collaborating, discussing, sharing, putting their work out there a little bit, they start to get gain, get a little confidence and continue doing that. So, you know, we've, we've actually conducted some research um, about ePortfolio persistence. And I won't go into that because that could be an entire other learner's mindset discussion conversation there. But we noticed that students that are given an opportunity to share their voice in their own authentic way, um, choice over their ePortfolio platform, um, control over the things that are important to them, authentic and meaningful work from their courses and not just, you know, respond to these two questions, but actual, you know, applied learning that they can take and, uh, and build on their ePortfolio and then share that in their own organizations. Look, I built this presentation and I'm working on this and I want to share this with my, my grade level and then I want to expand this to my team and then I want to expand this to my school. This gives them the opportunity to do that. And what's great is all of their classmates have access to their, to their links. They share comments, they discuss about it, they help each other, they collaborate, they build a community of uh, practice almost in that way, um, in their own way around sharing networking and um, you know, uh, building out their ideas. So you know, I think going back to the piano example, it's like you know, if you're playing Amazing Grace or, or you're playing some song on the, on the piano, whatever that may be, uh, Sherry to Fire, who knows what that is. If you miss a note somewhere, you know, it might make the sound of the song completely off. But if you engage all of the notes the way that, you know, that is um, meant for the song to be played, you get the full impact, the full, you know, so you don't want to, you know, miss those little nuggets of uh, greatness along the way. I mean, I, I remember my mom playing when I was younger and, you know, she missed a note, she would stop and start over. You know what? That's the best thing about ePortfolio. You can edit and delete and iterate as you go. You don't have to stop and start over. Yeah. You know, and so anyway, just something, I, a few of my thoughts as you were talking. Well, um, again, I'm going to go back to our student example in, in the same class or meeting last night. Um, another student who was quite sophisticated in her technology use, um, and we were, we were talking about the ePortfolio and, and what, what, what they need to do in the, in the capstone and what we're, where we're going or what we're doing as we go forward or what they do as they go forward. And she had mentioned that um, this ePortfolio experience was quite transformative for her. And she talked a little bit about it. And then she also put it put this in the chat, you know, I, I've created an e-portfolio for this business, I've created an e-portfolio for this organization, not e-portfolio, I've created a website here, built a website for this, done a website for that, but the e-portfolio I've done in this course, it's my e-portfolio, the, the, the M and the Y were capitalized, it's my e-portfolio, it makes all the difference in the world, right? The, the ownership um, is, is so significant. Um, and, you know, we go back to the example of, you know, connecting the dots and playing music and finding that rhythm. Um, and the rhythm that these students find in, in terms of their e-portfolio, um, that final composition is full, is rich, and reflects their learning, their understanding, yeah. right? And, and it, it's really quite exciting. And, and I can hardly wait to read their final synthesis because I, I this is so common when, when we take a look at this is that there's going to be a realization point where these these learners go wow look at what I accomplished look at what I built look at what I have look at what I'm able to do look at what's happening in my learning environment look at my innovation plan you know we've got this blended learning environment you know we've got uh, you know all these students in high school now in English are using and social are using e-portfolios of their own they're creating they're finding their voice so these students reflect back on their activities or the maker space that we built in, in the library now is going to be expanded to other places you know because uh, the all the innovation plans are so radically different but they, they get that reflection that it's it's mine and they own it and and there's that pride of ownership and and you know what? It, it doesn't matter how melodic or how rhythmic <laughs> the, the e-portfolio is. It, it, it doesn't matter. And you mentioned something else that's extremely important. It can be changed. It can be improved. And, and what I am seeing, the students who really 
buy into the notion that they own it are always looking at, oh, I've got to fix that part of my portfolio. I've got to improve that part. So it, it isn't just a container where I'm putting stuff. When the, when the learners are, are thinking, oh, I've, I want to improve that. I want to add this. I want to shape this. You know, they're, they're looking at ways that they can actually make this learning space more effective in the same ways that, you know, if, if I were to, you know, every time my wife walks into a, 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 a store, a furniture store or something, you know, she's envisioning how she can actually shape and mold our learning space or our, our living space in a different way, right? So that that, that e-portfolio becomes a, this space, your space, you can shape and mold and present in a variety of different ways. So it's, it's exciting if it's used properly. But again, it goes back to that notion, you know, that you have to create that environment where that WordPress that Wix, that Weebly, that that tool, that digital tool moves from being a digital container to being a tool of the learner's voice and, and a tool that, that, not, that is not just about capturing their voice, but it'll magnify their voice okay. and allow them to show it and present it in a, in a much more significant way. Ah, oh, I kept thinking that, I'm going back to my piano example again, because every time you, you talk, I think of something else. A piano player's fingers, they learn how to hit keys just the right way to expand that section, that sound. You know, when you play Chariots of Fire, it's strong. You know, in the very beginning, it's powerful. It almost sounds like a storm's rolling in, right? But a piano player's keys, they know how to expand and, and evoke emotion from people and passion um, just by hitting a key, you know, a certain way. And that connects so that, that connects back to people's passion a little bit, kind of affects people. So as people are building, and to, to bridge the connection of what I'm trying to say here, when people are building their e-portfolios, when there's passion behind it, and they're actually, you know, their um, key points, they're revising, they're restructuring, they're connecting their passion to their purpose in life. And aren't we helping folks um, prepare for life um, and, and this is one way to do that. So when I think about a, a piano player and, and running their keys, they certain keys are light, certain are dainty. Then they go back and they hit it with the passion. So I see students who have um, e-portfolio posts, you know, the blog posts on their EPs, and they they'll they'll make certain words larger. They want that that key point to stand out, or they'll they'll change and highlight the text, or they'll italic certain part of the text to make that part stand out, or they'll They'll insert a one minute video clip to, to maximize what they're trying to say. There, there's the passion behind what they're saying is right there. So it shouldn't be hard to find if they are putting the passion into it. Um, if not, it may be simple as, you know, let me just use the upload scribed or crocodile and just upload, you know, but <laughs> It when they do that so that, that's difficult so you definitely you see the passion behind the fingers um, whenever folks are really pouring into their EP yeah and um, I think we've got to be careful that we don't keep on repeating the same point or I have to be careful I don't keep on repeating the same point in the sense that that passion we we as instructors as instructional designers as as people who create that learning environment we have the ability to quench that passion by what we ask our learners to do. Mm -hmm. If we give our learners choice, ownership, and voice through something that's real, that, that authentic learning opportunity, well, guess what? That passion that ignites that voice, that ignites the ability to bring together those ideas that they can emphasize and, and, and they can find their rhythm. If we give them that ability to take ownership, well, then the passion flows. But if we simply ask them to regurgitate information, we're kind of quenching that passion. Not kind of, I think we are. Yeah. And, and, and if I can sort of refer to Ken Robinson, you know, we, we have learners um, who are presenting their ideas um, and we have that ability to, you know, um, or he cautions us to tread softly, right, on those ideas and to be Absolutely. careful and, and to actually do things that help to pull those ideas out, to pull out those passions, to pull out those desires. And again, it goes back to our design, our learning design. If we create that environment where the student takes ownership, they can do something real, that's theirs, the passion follows. So, yeah. Creativity before it's even started. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I, I, think, I think we've hit some of the key points here. Um, 
passion, creativity, rhythm, learning, depth of learning, you know, the transformative learning, it, it's all it's all within our grasp if we design the right type of environment, right? And that e-portfolio becomes just one of many tools that we can use to magnify that student's voice. So I, I, I see the e-portfolio almost as an amplifier <laughs> on our musical, <laughs> our, our musical analogy. So yeah, interesting. Um, so the question is, are we amplifying or are we creating that environment where students can amplify their voice? So, um, or are we creating that environment where the students can even find their voice? Because they're not gonna find their voice if they're just regurgitating content, regurgitating information. What, and why bother? Why, why bother? There's no voice to be found if you're just giving something back. Right. If it's yours, if it's yours, if you own it, if it has significance to you, it will make a difference. Um, so again, uh, it goes back to the design you know, we, we have the ability to really make a difference in people's lives. And it goes back to what we've been saying all along. We have the ability to change the world one learner at a time. If we allow that learner to grow, to experiment, to, to be creative. That means we've got to let go a little bit. So e-portfolios, a good e-portfolio environment. And if you're, if you're building e-portfolios or if you've got a situation where you want your students to use e-portfolios, guess what? You got to let go. It's got to be theirs. And again, not spending too much time in our research, but our research confirms that if they own it and if they can actually find their voice through uh, the assignments, it can make all the difference in the world. Wonderful tool. Can be a high impact practice if it's used right. Yep. I think, I think we're on the right track. And on that note, I think that might be enough of our discussion on e-portfolios because you know we're, we uh, we want to stop while we're ahead before we start moving into maybe a, a sports analogy, which is going to fall <laughs> apart. So <laughs> I think we'll stick with the music analogy and the e-portfolios as a tool to amplify the learner's voice. So uh, wonderful discussion. Looking forward to talking to you a bit more about uh, some of the other ideas that we need to deal with on the e-portfolio. Uh, wonderful potential, as always. Thank you so much.